uh, played good minutes. You're not going to make every shot. You're not going to make every uh, play, but you got to be locked in. You get, you can't, you can't lose the mental game. And we did that in that first quarter. We gave them eight, eight threes. I think 17 attempts. I was more concerned with the 17 attempts. That was on pace for a record. And then the second quarter, I think they only had one, one for whatever, seven or one for eight. Um, I thought Rui, Rui and uh, Rolo changed the game. Rui was guarding a lot of times one through five. Switched out on one of the best guards in the league, one of the best shot makers in the league, one of the best crafty players in the league. He did a good job. And then Rolo did a good job of doing the uh, containing, making him take tough shots, getting them inside the three and uh, making them miss some shots at the rim. Uh, but I thought that was huge. And then Bonga. Bonga hasn't played in a long time, uh, middle of the game minutes, but tells you that he was, he's been preparing for this opportunity. Um, he came in, gave us five solid minutes. But I thought everybody, I thought Russell and um, obviously Brad was incredible take away their turnovers, but uh, but yeah, they were solid throughout the game. Defensively, those, 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 this team is hard to guard and they're on a roll. They've won six games in a row and they score a lot of points and they take a lot of threes. And we did a pretty good job of in that take away that first quarter from threes. And, and what do you think about Russell's night? Uh, we've seen him have triple doubles before, but to go 11 of 17 from the field. I thought he was, you know, he's, he's getting in the rhythm. You know, he's, he's getting in a rhythm. Uh, he's going to have more games like this. Guy's a, guy's a championship player. How he prepares, how he talks to our guys, how he forces the team to be, be ready. And his voice was heard a lot in that first quarter. And that's what you want your leaders to do. Um, but yeah, he shot the ball well. Turnovers, you know, averaging a little over or whatever, under five, I'm trying to get that down in the high threes. Uh, but he just makes plays. He puts so much pressure on the defense. Um, still, you know, we haven't made a lot of threes, but we made the big ones when they counted. DB made two big ones. We needed them. And he didn't make anything prior to that, but he made the two count that he counted that we needed. And I thought, and then Rui made the free throws down the stretch was great. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, Lillard, other than that third quarter, wasn't as much hitting the shots tonight. He's, he's Dame, so he ends up with 35. But, but what did you think that you guys did against him that, that was at least working, if anything? Well, we made some mistakes in that third quarter, the first play of the game. Russell went to help um, Brad guard um, uh, Trent when Brad had him under control about this eight, eight foot mark on the left side and, and they passed it out to a wide open three. That got him going. Uh, Russell should have never did that. Uh, and, then we, and then we made another mistake. We made three mistakes off of their, their, their start to the third quarter and they got all threes on them. I thought, I thought we had bodies. I thought Russell did a good job of making them take tough shots, trying to get him to his, to the side that we want him to, to go to. He's, he's, he's special going one way and he's really good going the other way. So I like the, I like the chances are to make him go to the side he's only really good at. Um, great player, man. He had an off shooting night. We, we helped, but he did have a, some missed shots that he normally would make. Ava. Scott, you mentioned the defense, um, how it's been kind of better for longer stretches at a time, more consistently. What do you feel like you guys are doing differently, or do you chalk it up to kind of what you've been saying all along with getting games under you and then your legs back a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it's. I thought I thought early in the season when we we lost a bunch of close games, uh, it was it was mainly that we weren't we weren't really. In a, in a good rhythm for a lot of different reasons. And but the last, we kept saying, we need games, we need games. Well, February has given us games and that's what we need. Um, we're gonna get, I think I think the last couple of days or games, uh, we, I felt our legs were, were ready. We're ready to, you know, 
to play some consistent basketball on the defensive end. It's hard to be a good defensive team when you're not in great shape. And the reason why we're not in great shape, we missed three weeks in the middle of the season. Um, it wasn't because we got guys that are lazy and, you know, eating in and out burgers. It's just that we had, we had guys that you know, missed a bunch of games and we didn't practice and we haven't really practiced, but I think the defense, the last 12 games has been really good. We just got to keep that up, have the defensive edge and, you know, our, our offense is going to click once we start making some threes consistently. And um, you mentioned Lopez's defense again. Is it just like you said last time, kind of he knows the timing, he knows all the little veteran moves to make that he was able to um, change things in the second quarter? Yeah, he's a high IQ basketball player. He knows he knows his he knows what he does. He's not the quickest guy in the league, but he knows his angles. And to me, that's important to the big. You not you don't have to you don't have to be quick. You got to be smart. You got to know your 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 skill set. And he knows it. He's been around enough players and he's guarded enough guards coming at him. He knows how much how much room he needs to give them. And just like we just told him, you know, just get him off the three point line, help your guard. And once he is, just meet the guard at the rim, make him make a tough shot over you. And then when in the second half, we did a much better job of, of, of boxing out on on canters. I thought he I thought in that first, you know, that first quarter, he just he dominated us, he just threw us around and got every offensive rebound. And those are frustrating. You make a good player miss a shot and then their big just cleans it up and gets a rebound. But I thought Rolo's toughness throughout this game, I played him a lot of minutes straight too. And I called some extra timeouts and they called a timeout. So I was just going to keep riding with them. I, but I know he was, he was exhausted. We'll give him the day off tomorrow. Roy Young. Hey, Scott, um, you know, obviously you've been around Russell for a, a long time. And with this season being so difficult for him, I, maybe it's fair to say this has been one of the most difficult seasons of his career, up and down, heavy, inconsistent swings for him. What have you seen from his attitude and, and the way that he's shown up and kind of gotten through some of these heavy ups and downs throughout the season? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see the ups and downs as, as you're stating, but I, I see his shot as ups and downs. But. That's not, you know, I don't predicate. I mean, his, his, it's not, his game is not based on making, making and missing shots. His game on is leading us. We're, we're a young group of guys that need a veteran guy like him. Brad has, Brad has did a good job, but he couldn't be the only one the last few years uh, with, with John, you know, missing all the games he missed. But Russell gave us, he has set the tone. And our guys know, our guys are much more in tune how to prepare uh, to win a game. You know, we, we still got to play better to win games. He has to play better to win games, but he doesn't, he rebounds, he passes, he needs to, he needs to clean up his turnovers and his shots, you know, through three or four shots a game that we, he can wipe away. But he's led us so many ways that I, I don't even want to get into because our players know it. You can ask any player on this team and they know that he's, he's, he means business. This is not, this is not a hobby for him. And a lot of times in this league, people look at it as a hobby. It's fun. It's, you know, we get to do something we love. And I, I, I get that, but it's still your job. It's your livelihood. It's how you, it's how you, you represent your organization, your city, your family, your coaches. And Russell does that at the highest level I've seen. You know, I've been with him a long time in OKC and he was always, he's always been a player that wanted to get better, that gave everything he had and left everything on the practice court and the game court. And he's done that for us. He's given us, he's given us a, a, a pathway to how to be a, a championship level player. And our young guys need it. Sometimes they don't understand how hard he is on them, but they're going to realize it in years to come that that's how you start your career off the right way by being around good good players. We've seen it time and time again. Young players around bad, bad veterans is a disaster. And we've seen it many times. I've seen it as a player, but Russell and Brad are great examples for our younger players to look up to. Thanks, Scott. Kellen. Hey, Scott, just going off that, what impact has Russ had on, has had on Brad and impact and influence had on Brad? 
Well, I mean, Russell is a, a high level player in, in, in itself, but what he's done, he is, he's helped Brad. And Brad said it, he gave a lot of credit to Russell to be an all-star starter. And Russell, Russell knows how special Brad is and they get along. I mean, it seems like they've been playing for a while and it's only gonna get better. They have a good feel, they have a good respect uh, for one another and they can get on each other. And they do it more than probably guys think they do it. They, they look at each other and they know, okay, it's time. Time to, you know, step up and, and, and lead this group. You know, we've had, I couldn't ask for two better players to have during this awkward season that all the things that's happened to us. And when having those two guys help us along the way and, and not let go of the rope when, you know, every time, you know, you look around and somebody wants to say something, you know, about, you know, this team, we're just going to keep fighting. And you have fighters on your, as your leaders, that's going to, it's going to pay dividends. And it's, sometimes it's going to take longer than you want it. But if you keep doing the right things every day and don't get bored with that, that's how you find success. Right. You said, you said me, Matt? Sorry. Well, I'm yep. okay. So you said me. Okay. Uh, Your hand is up, Scott, right? Red. It was up. Uh, there, there was this kind of crazy uh, analytical trend with you guys for the first 25-ish games of the year where teams were hitting a crazy amount of open shots against you. And I know you attributed that a lot to your closeouts and the types of open shots teams were taking. The, over this four-game winning streak, that's kind of gone down. I'm, I'm wondering how much of that you attribute to just stuff evening out and how much of that you attribute to stuff you guys have corrected over these four games. Well, we, we even more than the four games, we've changed some things up. Don't want to get into them, but we've changed some things up. And like I told the players after that first quarter, you want to, this is the only way to really guarantee the guy mi missing a three. It's the only way. And I, I, re I, I recommend that they try it in the second quarter. Don't let them shoot it. When you don't shoot it, they don't make it. And I thought we did a better job of that. And then when they do shoot it, you got to close out. You got to close out to that shot. You can't close out with this uh, sorry, you know what, close out and expect them to miss. These are high level players in this league and shots are plentiful from the threes. And, you know, and even when you do, like Lillard hit the, the end of the quarter shot, that was from whatever, 40 feet out with the contest. That's what, that's what great players do, but we, were, we weren't contesting all the way. And you can show it. You can take guys out of the lineup. You can take guys off their minutes. And that's what you got to keep doing. And I think there, there's, you know, the last 10 or 12 games, we've definitely played much better defensively, but I think we're contesting shots. And I give Rui a lot of credit. And that's hard. It's hard when you're a four in this league and you have to switch out on one, two, threes, and fours. And when he plays five, he has to guard one through five. It's hard. It's hard to know your own man, his tendencies, but now you got to know the four other guys on the floor and you got to know at game speed and you got to be able to see it, react, internalize it, and make it happen. And I give him credit. He's starting to, he's starting to see it and he's still not even finished a rookie year. Hey, Russ, um, what do you think keyed the turnaround there for you guys uh, starting in the second quarter? Oh, uh, just a feeling. You know, we start off a little, I mean, I don't think we start off slow. I thought we did a good job initially. Then uh, we gave up a big quarter. I think we had about 41 points or so, uh, 43 points to be exact. And uh, after that, we locked in defensively. Uh, we did a good job in the, in the second quarter to kind of regroup and get ourselves together. And what was working for you in particular, um, you know, not just getting the triple double, but shooting a high percentage? I can't hear you. What do you say? I didn't hear you in the, in the. Oh, sorry. Uh, what was working for you in particular tonight? You know, not just the triple double, but shooting over 60%. Oh, shit. I made shots. I usually make, <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> which will come, you know, just content. I stay locked in and stay sticking to my routine. Um, I want like every season. I know it's a long season. Um, and I'm a guy that wants to create consistency and get better as the season goes along. Um, and I just make shots I normally make. So obviously I did a good job of that tonight and concentrating and focusing on that. Ava? 
Russell, it seems like you guys are playing um, better defense for longer stretches of time, kind of more consistently. What do you feel like was the difference the past couple of games that kind of sparked um, that? I think over um, doing a good job of just, you know, letting the other team know that, we, that we're here um, and that we're going to be physical. We're going to stand our ground and make it tough for them. Um, I thought we did a hell of a job of that tonight. I mean, they ended up shooting 35% from the field. And, um, you know, we can't ask for better defense than that. And I thought we did a hell of a job. What's most key to you when you're dealing with the time change on the other coast for your routine, like to make sure that you're successful going into a game? Uh, you know what? I've been playing on the West Coast for so long. I don't really, it's not that crazy of adjustment. <laughs> uh, I didn't think about it much, uh, to be honest. Uh, kind of felt like a normal uh, time for me. Royce. Hey, Russ. Um, you know, with the way that this season has kind of gone for you with some of the kind of nagging injuries getting at you, the, the ups and downs that have kind of taken place, I know better than to ask you if you ever had any kind of doubts about, you know, getting back to your elite level. But did, was there any point where you were kind of rethinking your approach or, or how you wanted to get back to playing uh, it? Yeah, I mean, you know what? Honestly, start of the year, Royce, I was – you know, debating, and it's, it's a difficult spot for me, honestly, because I'm a guy that likes to, uh, I don't like to let my teammates down. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm able to be available for them, even if I'm not 100%. Um, and that's just something that I've always done. It's probably not the best thing to do, um, but I, obviously as I've gotten older, uh, like I said, I had to stop. I had to stop um, because I, could, I wasn't able to explode and move the way I needed to. Um, and now I'm feeling, you know, um, a lot better, I'm able to move around and explode and, and, and get by people and, and make an impact on the game on both sides of the floor. And um, kind of as the season goes along, um, I'll definitely get better. And uh, I'm not worried about that one bit. Gotcha. Thanks, Russ. Nice to see you, Russ. Yeah, you too, man. Fred. Hey, Russell. Um, you've, you've played so many times against games in against uh, Dame in so many different environments. What when when people say the trick is just you just got to try to make his life difficult? What what does making Dame's life difficult entail when you're guarding him? I um, mean, you know, he's gonna he's gonna take tough shots. He's gonna tough and he's gonna take tough ones. He's gonna make tough ones. Uh, that's what great players do. Uh, you just gotta make him shoot a value number of shots and uh, shoot over the top. You know, like I said, he's 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 a good player and obviously he's been great this season. And uh, my job is to make sure that I'm able to just kind of keep pursuing and make, make the game tough for him and make him take tough shots. Thanks, Russ. Zach. Russ, you kind of talked to us a little bit about that, that bank shot that you hit a few times tonight. I know you work on it a lot. Like, where did that come about? Um, I know Tim Duncan, you know, kind of patented that in his day too. Um, well, you know, honestly, when I was younger, um, me and my dad, we used to work out <clears throat> and call it the cotton shot um, off the glass. And it's something that I've always done since I was in shit, high school, middle school. Um, so it's basically a shot that I'm, when I miss it, I'm so disappointed in myself because I've been working on my whole life. Um, but it's something that I've been doing for a long time. Thanks. Christos. Hello, Russ. Congratulations on the win, the performance as well. Do you believe that uh, this win and the way that you won tonight is a kind of a statement about your potential as a team and also about your partnership with uh, Bradley? Do you believe that uh, this game proves that uh, you can fit uh, perfectly on the court with him? Um, I definitely think it's a good win, good road win. Uh, just the first one of our trip, but I do, we, we're moving in the right direction as a team. Um, the wins and then playing the game the right way, the wins will come. And I think uh, that would give a lot of credit to. Know, coach Brooks, because he's not getting enough credit when we lose, they always look at the head coach, but when we win, they don't give him a lot of credit. And he's doing a hell of a job of making sure that we are playing at the best we can play, putting us in position to be great. Um, and he's done a hell of a job and making sure we get back on track. Um, and that's for me and Brad, man, we figuring out my job is to make sure I continue to push him and bring the best out of him every night. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. Hey, hey Robin. Um, Coach Brooks said several times tonight that uh, he was really impressed with Rui's defense, uh, that he was guarding uh, one through five. And, and I saw in his post-game speech to you guys, he mentioned it as well. Um, what, what did you see from Rui tonight defensively? I think Rui's been, been magnificent on the defensive end. Um, 
in the past couple of weeks. Um, he's really locked in. He's helping everybody. And like you said, he's been incredibly versatile. Uh, I, I think it's kind of a trickle down effect. We, you know, we get Mo in the starting lineup. He has a lot of energy. Russ has a lot of energy. And I think people, people start feeling that. And it's been, it's been contagious. It's been a lot of fun. And what did you see from Russell Westbrook tonight? Um, you know, statistically, it might have been his best game of the year so far. I feel like it was, it was a lot of fun because he was pushing everybody. He was pushing everybody to be better. And I think that's the thing I, I appreciated most about him tonight. Royce. Sorry, I had trouble with my mute. Hey, Robin, um, kind of piggybacking on, on the, the Westbrook thing. Um, what have you seen from him throughout this season with, you know, some of the, the adversity he's kind of dealt with? And I know there's been a lot of talk about kind of how he's, he's stepped up as a, as a voice in the locker room, but what have you seen from him and how he's kind of mentally approached some of the adversity that he's dealt with? Um, I think he's been fantastic. Uh, there's always a lot of attention on him, but I think, like you said, he, he, he's still being very vocal, um, still teaching. And I think he's done a wonderful job of figuring out exactly what his role is on this team with Brad out there and um, with a lot of young guys out there. Fred. All right, Robin, we'll make this a, a Russell Westbrook Zoom. Uh, I'm. I'm, I'm just curious from your, because you're 32 and have played on a bunch of teams and you've seen a lot of different leadership styles. And what we hear from Russ is that he'll, or from other guys that Russ will get on guys. And I'm wondering how you've seen young guys respond when Russ gets on them. I think they've been very receptive because at the same time, um, Russ will get on you one second. But then when, when you also, when you make a mistake, he's also the first person you pick you up sometimes. So I think people understand where it's coming from. He's only trying to make the, the person who made the mistake better. He's trying to make the team better. And, and you've kind of, especially the last couple of games, you guys have kind of played with like a three center rotation on like the first quarter. What's, what's that been, been like for you rotating that sort of way with that kind of uncertainty? It's been a lot of fun, honestly. Um, the three of us, Mo, Lex, we're all pulling for each other whenever they're on, the, whenever the other's on the floor. So I, for me, I love it. You, the, the NBA, you see the opposite. You see teams going small. I love that we have three centers. Um, we should have TB out here. You know, we, we got four centers that we can put on the floor. Last question to Quinn. How you doing, Robin? Um, I noticed that you guys played some really stifling defense, specifically in the paint, and it's just a lot of verticality, keeping your arms straight up. Has that been a focus for you guys? You you guys are bottom in the league in fouls per game, but tonight, like the defense around the paint has been and was impeccable. Was that a focus in practice or anything, or you just, guys just kind of, I guess, clicked more often than not? For sure, it's it's something we've been emphasizing. Uh, I know in a lot of our earlier games, teams really uh, blitzing us from the free throw line. They they'd hit a lot of threes, get a lot of offensive rebounds, and you know, a lot of easy ones from the line. I think with us being better in that regard, if we can continue that, that'll be that's going to be big for us for, with each game. Brad, I'll try to keep it quick. Um, I know you're going to mention all the things that you guys could have done a little bit better, but is this broadly, is this formula kind of the ideal formula going ahead where you and Russ are kind of uh, setting pace on offense and then the defense shows up? Uh, first person I've ever say is Jesus Christ. Um, you said it's the total opposite. Like everybody's involved. It's not just me and Russ just carrying the offense. Uh, you know, we're keeping everybody involved, and then defensively, it takes all five. Um, and we're being better at that. You know, everybody's accepting the individual challenge. Uh, you know, we're helping each other, and you know, it's all starting to click. You know, we're, we're not getting tired of doing the, you know the right things on the floor, and I think that's just been a testament to our our maturity over the last few games. Chase. Brad, we've seen you have many nights like this, but not often a, a teammate play like they did, like Russ did tonight. What's it like when you're on the floor and, and two guys are, are playing like stars, like you guys were tonight? Um, I mean, it's great. You know, Russ is an MVP guy. He's a Hall of Famer in our league. And it's just a matter of time before everything starts clicking for him, you know. Uh, he holds himself to a high standard. 
Um, you know, he's just like me in that, in that regard. He critiques himself very tough and he knows that, you know, he has to be the best version of himself every night, or at least he tries to be. And, uh, you know, tonight was one of those nice scores. You know, he's a walking triple double. Uh, you know, and he's just a, he's just a great teammate, great leader. You know, he's everything we need him to be. Zach. Brad, uh, coach talked a lot about Rui and his defense and, and Robin said, you know, the last couple of weeks, he's been getting some energy from the starting unit too, just defensively and with energy. What have you seen with his defensive growth just from year one to year two, or maybe even like the beginning of year two to right now? Well, Rui told us in a few practices ago that he can guard one through five and we're holding him to that standard and he's holding us up to that and he's doing it. So it's no surprise to us, honestly. Christos. Uh, hello, Bradley. Congratulations on the win and the performance. Is this a win and the way that you won tonight against the Blazers a kind of a statement about your potential as a team and your partnership with, uh, with Russell on the court? Uh, we don't, I mean, we're not in a position to be making statements. Uh, you know, we're just trying to come out and compete and win. We understand we still have an opportunity to make a nice little playoff run. Um, you know, we're just putting ourselves in position to do so. So, you know, we're not we're not worried about, you know, the other side. We're controlling what we can control and you know, we're not getting weary and doing good. You know, we're gonna continue to continue to, you know, do what we do at a consistent level, uh, cheer on the next man and and continue to play scrambling defense. You know, that's that's been our that's been our go to for the last couple. So, you know, we're just gonna continue to, you know, stick with what's been working. Neil. Brad, you had your then career high 51 uh, at Portland. Do you buy in at all to, you know, there are certain road arenas that, you know, are just better for people? No, Neil. Just a groove? I guess that's fair. So I don't give a damn about anybody else who plays here in Portland. I care about me and my guys. Um, but you know, it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't pay attention to stats like that. You know, I'm the, the least analytical guy on this zoom. So you don't really feel that like any other opposing arenas you maybe feel better in. It's all kind of the same. You know, I, I, I think I lead the league in scoring. I think I feel good every single night, no matter what arena we in. Baby. Sure. All right, we'll finish up with Quinn. B, uh, have you noticed anything particular in Davis's defense as of late? I looked at the Denver game and I saw a few clips where I was like, oh, that's good. And tonight he held his own against Carmelo and those guys. Have you seen anything like that in his game on that side of the ball? Uh, I think he's just accepting the challenge. Coach challenged him, Russ challenges him, we all do. Uh, you know, and then I think I was watching film and he's, he takes it as disrespect when guys want to, you know, kind of call him out and pick and rolls. And, um, you know, he does it. I think he's been really accepting that challenge, getting into a stance, you know, altering the ball handler when he needs to, uh, you know, frustrating Melo as best as he can. We understand he's a Hall of Famer, great scorer. And, uh, and he's been rebounding well. I think that's really but like has been his big, like, push over the last few games is just him rebounding. You know, I think that just gets him into the flow of the game, uh, you know, a lot better. You know, in the offensive end, we just want him to shoot every time he touches. So, uh, but it's good, you know, Q, that he's able to, you know, accept that challenge on the defensive end, use his size, his body, uh, and get in there and help us as best he can. Uh, 